Hey everybody, how are you doing today? It is July 26th, 2020, 3.47 p.m. here in Michigan. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday. As I was doing more research looking into past outbreaks, past you know epidemics, pandemics, etc., um, I came across some information, a few articles from mainstream news. Um, so we're using their information again, okay? And the similarities to what I'm about to read to you, I believe, will blow you out of your seat. Let's get into this. This is from July 9th, 2009. So you're talking the same month, July, okay, 2009. Swine flu vax may target schools. Obama administration says H1N1 swine flu vax may be ready in October. July 9th, 2009, health officials are looking toward thousands of schools and daycare centers to mount a possible mass vax program against the H1N1 swine flu this fall, government planners said Thursday. The plan, which still depends on unanswered questions of how easy a swine flu vax is to produce and how well it works, could see tens of millions of doses targeted mainly at children beginning in October, Obama administration officials said. You know, I love the word targeted because that's exactly what it is. Targeted mainly at children. Swine flu has sickened an estimated 1 million Americans since it was first identified in the U.S. in the spring. Approximately 170 U.S. deaths have been reported. I want you to remember the one million, okay? Remember their numbers. Just remember, one million is what they're saying that it's sickened right here. The widely publicized outbreak was thought to have originated in Mexico. It sent officials, it sent health officials and manufacturers scrambling to produce a vax against the H1N1 swine flu. Test lots of vax are soon to enter clinical trials to see how well the vax works in helping the body mount immune protection against the H1N1 swine flu virus and how many doses it might take to get that production or that protection. See, once again, though, you know, how many doses, how many times do they have to put that vax inside of you? New infections continue across the U.S. this summer. Experts expect the virus to infect many more people in the fall when flu viruses typically spread much more easily and outbreaks can take hold. What if they continue to push that it's going to get worse this fall, right? You know, I was actually discussing just all of this, what, how they plan and their numbers and how their numbers have continued to drop since their peak in April, okay? You know, I was starting to look into all the numbers. Remember, I showed you on, like, pneumonia, how pneumonia numbers have plummeted, you know, deaths from pneumonia, okay? Well, because we know they're counting them for, you know, CD19 deaths. Well, maybe the reason that they're not able to push the death number right now is because there is not hardly anybody dying from the normal flu, okay? But come this fall, Guess what numbers they'll be able to use to pump up their death number instead of their case number that they're so hardly pushing right now? Because all they're pushing now is cases. They're not even talking about deaths because they've continued to drop for 12 weeks consecutively. They won't tell you that. That's straight from their stats. But to come this fall, they will be able to use every single person who actually dies from the normal flu, which will what? Inflate their numbers dramatically. That all ties in right here. I mean, they're literally, it's the same thing. You know, they're telling you that in the fall, it's going to spread worse. It says, since the population that seems to be most affected is younger folks, school-age kids, kids in daycare centers, we may well partner with the schools looking at those as possible sites for VAX programs. See, and this is another thing, too. In 2009, this was supposedly an epidemic. They, they, it wasn't classified as a pandemic. It was an epidemic. But it was obviously, look how bad they were pumping it up and how much we needed a vax. But this one was one that went after kids. So this one should have been more important than anything. They should have been shutting down schools. They should have been doing all this stuff. Now, listen, they do shut down some schools, but I want you to read these other articles I'm going to get into. It says, at a meeting Thursday, the National Institute of Health Headquarters which, of course, is where who comes from? Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Fauci. 
urged state and local officials to be prepared for the potential potential of a fall vax campaign. Everything falls to the vax. That is what they want. Every single time you look back in history, including now, when they push this exact narrative, it always leads to one thing. Vax. Get your kids vax. Get everybody vax. It's just gone step by step, getting more serious, more forceful, until we are where we are today. And we know how bad this is going to get. Says officials said they were planning a voluntary vax program focused on children, adults with underlying diseases. Wow, right? Healthcare workers and families of small children and infants. What we can't do is wait until October and then suddenly decide that that we have a very very serious situation on our hands. It says, production of the swine flu vax. Five U.S. vax makers are ramping up production of H1N1 swine flu vax. The vax is entering trials to test its effectiveness and also to determine if it will have to be delivered in more than one dose. Rinse and repeat. They do this exact thing over and over and over, and the masses fall for it every time. Just wait. It's going to get really good. Now check this out. I come across this article. This is from CBS News. Swine flu cases overestimated? If you've been diagnosed, probable or presumed, 2009 H1N1 or swine flu in recent months, you may be surprised to know this. Odds are you didn't have H1N1 flu. Oh, it gets better. In fact, you probably didn't have flu at all. That's according to state-by-state test results obtained in a three-month-long investigation done by CBS News. The ramifications of this finding are important. According to the CDC and Britain's National Health Service, once you have H1N1 flu, you're immune from future outbreaks of the same virus. Those who think they've had H1N1 flu but haven't might mistakenly presume they're immune. As a result, they might skip taking a vax that could help them and expose themselves to others with H1N1 flu under the mistaken belief they won't catch it. Parents might not keep sick children home from school, mistakenly believing they already had H1N1 flu. Did you just see how they did that? You go to the first article we went to, they're talking about how bad it is. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. One million Americans have gotten it. It's very, very deadly. It's attacking our kids. You have to take the vax because so many people have it. Okay? Then you go to your next article, and they're literally telling you that they overestimated, that you probably didn't even have it. So what did they do with step one? With the fear, they got people to do what? Run and take their backs. Now they're going to do this with the fear this way. They're going to do it with fear and guilt as well. The same thing. Oh, well, we were actually wrong. You may not have even had it when we told you that you had it. So you better hurry and go take this fax now. It gets better. Let's just keep going. Why the uncertainty about who has, who has and who hasn't had H1N1 flu? In late July. Look at that. Where are we? We're in late July. The similarities on this case are just, it's crazy. In late July, the CDC abruptly advised states to stop testing for H1N1 flu and stopped counting individual cases. I just re- did a video, and I'll leave it in the description. It's very important how they are not counting individual. They're starting to count all the cases in pooled testing. So they will test four people, and instead of testing each one individually, they are going to test one of the four. And if it comes back positive, then they get their positive, and they, you know, those are their numbers. They say they go back then and test all four people, but we're not going to get into that. The point is, is it's the same thing. They stopped counting individual cases. That's what they're starting to do now. And plus, you also have Trump coming on saying we should stop testing, etc., etc. It's crazy. Listen, the rationale given for the CDC guidance to forego testing and tracking individuals, right? Here we go. It was all the same cases was, why waste resources testing for H1N1 flu when the government has already confirmed there's an epidemic? Wow. 
Some public health officials privately disagreed with the decision to stop testing and counting, telling CBS News that continued tracking of this new and possibly changing virus, I mean, it's, it's the same thing, these are all the things we're hearing now, was important because H1N1 has a different epidemiology affect younger people more than seasonal flu and has been shown to have a higher case fatality rate than other flu virus strains. So this one was going after your kids. You know, this is where they put it all on people. Put it all on, you know, your parents, sorry. Put it all on parents. You know, you better go get this vaccine. This thing is coming for your kids. CBS News learned that the decision to stop counting H1N1 flu cases was made so hastily that states weren't given the opportunity to provide input. Instead, on July 24th, the Council for State and Territorial Epidemiologists, CSTE, issued the following, state, following notice to state public health officials on behalf of the CDC. Attached are the questions and answers that will be posted on the CDC website tomorrow explaining why the CDC is no longer reporting case counts for novel H1N1, hmm, for novel CV19. Just, to, just change them out. It's just rinse and repeat. Change the words out. Make it a new something new and unknown that nobody knows of. CDC would have liked to have run these by you for input, but unfortunately there was not enough time before these needed to be posted. When CDC did not provide us with the material, we filed a Freedom of Information request with the Department of Health and Human Services. More than two months later, the request has not been fulfilled. Of course not. We also asked CDC for state-by-state -state test results prior to halting of testing and tracking, but CDC again initially was unresponsive. Look at this, testing and tracking. While we waited for CDC to provide the data, which it eventually did, we asked all 50 states for their statistics on state lab confirmed H1N1 prior to the halt of individual testing and counting in July. The results reveal a pattern that surprised a number of healthcare professionals we consulted. The vast majority of cases were negative for H1N1 as well as seasonal flu. Despite the fact that many states were specifically testing patients deemed to be most likely to have H1N1 flu based on symptoms and risk factors, such as travel to Mexico. So, seems kind of the same, right? Likely to have CD19 based on your symptoms, everything under the sun, including no symptoms, and risk factors such as traveling to CHINA. These are all the same things. It's unknown what patients who tested negative for flu were actually afflicted with since the illness was not otherwise determined. This is the best part of this entire article. Guess what they thought they had? Health experts say it's assumed the patients had some sort of cold or upper respiratory infection that is just not influenza. Can you believe that? That is exactly what we've been saying. The CD19 is a cold or just another upper respiratory infection that is not a deadly pandemic that they're telling us it is. With most cases diagnosed solely on symptoms and risk factors, the H1N1 flu epidemic may seem worse than it is. Look at this. This They flipped it. This is in a few months. They went from telling you that it was the end of the world for your children, you've got to get them vaxxed, to now saying it was seeming worse than it is. Do you not think that that's what they're going to do here? You know, you, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I bet you when we see on the other end of this, if we ever get to the other end of it, you know they've done the same thing with all their testing. They continue to say their testing has false positives, false, you know, the negatives. It's not consistent. We don't have this. We don't have that. Those are all back doors for them to back out of just like they're doing right here in 2009. For example, on September 22nd, this alarming headline came from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. H1N1 flu infects over 250 Georgetown students. Are we not getting stories just like that? Look at all these young kids out partying. 30 people out of a party, all 30 of them got CD19. 
H1N1 flu can be deadly, and an outbreak of 250 students would be an especially troubling cluster. However, the number of six students came not from lab-confirmed tests, but from estimates made by counting students who went to the student health center with flu symptoms. Students who called the H1N1 hotline or health center's doctor on call and students who went to the hospital's emergency room. So even if you called a hotline, they counted you as a case. Hmm, kind of sounds familiar on their overcounting now, right? Without lab testing, it's impossible to know how many of the students actually had H1N1 flu, but the statistical trend indicates it was likely much fewer than 250. How many times are they going to come out? How many articles are going to come out like this after all the stories they've pushed in mainstream now talking about all these parties happening, all these, you know, these clusters at churches, these clusters at, you know, all these gatherings, you know, graduation parties, all of them. They continue to push the same narrative. Open up your eyes and wake up. It's clearly right in front of you. CDC continues to monitor flu in general and H1N1 through sentinels, which basically acts, act as spot checks to detect trends around the nation. But at least one state, California, has found value in tracking H1N1 flu in greater detail. See? So California was working on the next step, on tracking, in, you know, the, the more tracking, the deeper tracking. What we're doing is much more detailed and expensive than what CDC wants, said Dr. Bella Matthias, California's acting chief of emergency preparedness and response. We're gathering data better to answer how severe is the illness. With CDC's fallback position, fallback position, yep, that's what they're going to take repeatedly here as well, there are so many uncertainties with who's being counted, it's hard to know how much we're seeing is due to H1N1 flu rather than a mix of influenza diseases generally. We can tell that apart, but they can't. See? So they were pushing back then for tracking, tracking, testing, testing, tracking. After our conversation with Dr. Matthias, Public affairs officials with California Department of Public Health emphasized to CBS News that they support CDC policy to stop counting individual cases, maintaining that the state has the resources to gather more specific testing data than the CDC. So they literally stopped counting them. So we have absolutely no idea where the numbers even were, yet they continue to push all these numbers right now. This shows here how they manipulate the numbers. They push them high when they want them, then they drop them back when they don't. They do the same thing every single time. Because of the uncertainties, the CDC advises, here we go, this is, this is, this is the same, this is their objective, and it will not change until every single person in this world is vaxxed. The CDC advises even those who were told they had H1N1 to get vaxxed unless they had lab confirmation. Persons who are uncertain about how they were diagnosed should get the 2009 H1N1 vax. That's unwelcome news for Marietta, Georgia, mom, whose two children were diagnosed with probable H1N1 flu over the summer. She hoped that that would mean they wouldn't need the hastily developed H1N1 flu vax. However, since their cases were never confirmed with lab tests, the CDC advises they get the vax. I wish they had tested and that I knew for sure whether they had it. I am not anxious to give them an experimental vax if they don't need it. God bless this mother right here because she is a great mom and she's looking out for her family. How messed up is this? They told you you had to get the vax to prevent you from getting it. Then even if you were told you had it back when you were counted as a case that you weren't even positive for, now they're saying, oh, sorry, we were wrong then. So just to be sure, you better go and get the vax anyways. Speaking to CBS 60 Minutes, CDC Director Dr. Frieden said he has confidence that the vax will be safe and effective. We're confident it will be effective. We have every reason to believe that it will be safe. Yeah, you're a complete liar. 
However, the CDC recommendation for those who had probable or presumed H1N1 flu to go ahead and get vaxxed anyways means the relatively small proportion of those who actually did have H1N1 flu will be getting the vax unnecessarily. This exposes them to rare but significant side effects such as paralysis from Chilean beer syndrome. This is crazy. It also uses up vax which is said to be in short supply, of course, right? The CDC was hoping to have shipped 40 million doses by the end of October, but only about 30 million doses will be available this month. Of course, the CDC did not respond to that report. And it just continues to go on. Here is another article from October 21st. So this is almost two months, September, yeah, two full months later, okay? H1N1 misdiagnosis could have consequences. Hmm. You think that all of this over-exaggeration, misdiagnosis, and all the fear, that misplaced fear that they're pushing could have massive consequences with CV19 as well? It says, on Washington Unplugged Wednesday, moderator Cheryl Atkinson spoke to Wall Street Journal reporter Alicia Mundy and Politico's Fred Barbish about a CBS News investigation finding that many people who were diagnosed probable or presumed to have 2009 H1N1 or swine flu actually did not have flu at all. The three-month investigation found, based on state-by-state -state test results, that only a small fraction of cases that doctors flagged as most likely to be swine flu actually tested positive for swine flu at state labs. The vast majority of cases were negative. You know, you're going to have people that are going to say, well, they're doing testing, te they're doing lab testing this time, so this doesn't apply because these were just presumed and, you know, they actually didn't do the testing. That's not true because they are doing the testing, but they're still telling you that their testing isn't 100% accurate. So that is the same thing. You can either say that it was a doctor that assumed or presumed that you had it due to your symptoms, or you can say that when you took your test, it gave you a false positive. They're the same thing. Atkinson pointed out that those who think they might have had H1N1 might mistake, mistakenly think they're immune and might forego the vax that they thought they ought to have. And on the other hand, if you really had it, the CDC is saying, go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get the flu shot anyway because you're not sure. But that's using up a limited amount of vax when we're hearing there are shortages. Yep. This is just, that's what you're going to hear too. They're going to push this too. Once this starts, you're going to hear that there's shortages so that people rush to try to get the ones that are left when they know they have more right there ready to go. Barbash discussed a Brookings Institute study on Wednesday that found there are significant costs to the school closures going on around the country, not just in dollars, but in terms of stress to the healthcare system. That's because healthcare workers often have to stay home with their kids. Listen to that. I mean, that's exactly what's going on when they're closing it. I mean, they're talking about that, you know, like when you close schools, some people have to stay home with their kids. It's going to hurt the economy. I mean, this is all the same. The point is to carefully consider the costs and the benefits before you immediately rush to close a school or the country for fear that the virus will spread like wildfire through a school or country, Barbash said, adding. The virus is spreading like wildfire, but whether any school ought to be closed down, the Department of Education says only when absolutely necessary. Now, here's the thing here, too, which I find so ironic. Even when they were talking about how bad this was, right, right now, and this was one that they said attacked and targeted children, they were still saying it wasn't even necessary unless it was extremely horrible to close schools. Yet... Now, with what we're dealing with now with CV19, they decided to shut down the entire country, more almost the entire world. And you think that that was just normal? You think that that actually should have been done? This is the most important part, and I'm going to leave it here, and I'll leave all the links in the description. It says, we want to make sure people understand we're not trying to downplay the seriousness of swine flu, which can be very serious. Atkinson said, but there is a risk of overreacting.
Everyone, do you not think that there are some massive risks of what they've done today, of what they've done in the last seven months? The overreacting, the fear pushed. These things will live with people for the rest of their lives, whether it is because they lost a job, they lost a business, they lost a family member, they lost whatever it may have been. These actions done by the powers that be will last with us forever. Are you going to continue to sit here and let them do what they're doing? They cannot continue to get away with what they are doing. We have to stand together now. Please share this information, share this video, share these articles, and continue to tell everyone you know the actual truth. This video may not be up long, so please download it if you can and save the links because this type of information is no doubt the information that they are trying to keep under wraps. Continue to pray every single day against this evil. There is no way we can beat this without prayer and without faith. So I continue to implore you to please pray as much as you can against this wickedness that is taking over this world. I love each and every one of you. We will continue to get through this. Stay strong. Stay safe. No fear. God bless.